So I asked my old lady the other night, I said, babe, would you love me if I was broke? She said, yeah, and I'd miss your ass too. I like him fuckers say, I don't pay for pussy. Yeah, you jacking off in, fool. That fucking rent comes due, you can stamp pussy on that envelope. They called a guy in Tallahassee, Florida, paying 14-year-old boys to fuck him in the ass. What did they do to punish this guy? Put him in prison. <laughs> Old bear rabbit, don't throw me in that briar patch, huh? What do you mean 12 years? I want life, I'm a happy fucking camper. <laughs> you know, all the women now, they say, fathers are telling their, their daughters, cause daughters are growing up so much quicker now. Any of them older boys take advantage of you? Just look at him and say, what are you gonna name the baby? That'll get rid of that son, bitch. <laughs> One night this young girl, she met up with a college guy. He got her back to the motel room. Got her in a bed, got her seduced. Got her undressed, started making love to her. Right before he climaxed, she remember what her daddy said. She said, what are you gonna name the baby? He jumped up, pulled his pants and ran out of the room. She said, damn, this is working. Another night, another guy got her in a motel room, was making love to her. She said, what are you gonna name the baby? He jumped up, pulled his pants and ran out of the room. Next night, the guy wasn't so stupid. He shut the lights off, put on a rubber. He's fucking her. She said, what are you gonna name the baby? He kept fucking her. She said, what are you gonna name the baby? He's fucking her. She said, what are you gonna name the baby? And he climaxed. She said, all right, smart ass. What you gonna name the baby? He rolled off of her, pulled the rubber off, tied the top of it in a knot, and said, Houdini, if that little motherfucker gets out of here. <laughs> Look at the hairdo on this motherfucker. Will you do that with a hand grenade? <laughs> Just still having them fucking war flashbacks. I was in that war too, motherfucker. I run so far back from the front lines, I saw a general. He said, why are you running, soldier? I said, cause I can't fly, motherfucker. Put me in charge of the damn motor pool. Guy calls up and said, I'd like to reserve a Jeep for General Johnson. I said, you mean fat ass Johnson? He said, soldier, you know who you're talking to? I said, no, he said, General Johnson. I said, you know who you're talking to? He said, no, I said, bye fat ass. <laughs> I'll never forget. This girl picked me up at my house. In her car, I'm walking down the driveway. And us men, when we fart, we got to squint our ass and scoot. You ever be at a party and have to fart? You squint and scoot, and there's always some dumbass that walk up to you and go, where are you going? Get the fuck out of my way for a shit on your rug, motherfucker. But I figure I'm a fast thinker. She opens up the passenger side like the guy generally does. I'm going to hop in. When she shuts that door and starts around the driver's side, I'm going to let this motherfucker go. If it don't stink too bad, I'll be in the clear. <laughs> she opens up the passenger side, I hopped in. She shut the door, I looked up, smiled, lift my ass up on one side of them vinyl seats. Fuck her sound like a machine gun. I test the air, it could have passed for a burnt radiator hose or some shit like that. <laughs> she opens up the driver's side, gets in, shuts the door and looks at me and points at the back and said, by the way, Jay, I want you to meet the couple we're double dating with tonight. <laughs> These people sitting in the back seat look at me like, we ain't going nowhere with this nasty motherfucker. <laughs> I'm on my way here. I get on one of them goddamn twin engine jets. Oh, that's a motherfucker. Get on a twin engine jet. We cruise in the air. About 10 minutes. A little stewardess come walking down the aisle. Fella sitting next to me looked at the stewardess and said, Steve, 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 Steve. She said, What is it, sir? He said, Engine, 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 engine. Without, 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 without. 
The engine on the right plane had malfunctioned. She said, that's okay, sit on the left side. We got a good engine over there. Sit him on the left side a few minutes. She come walking down the aisle. She said, she, she. Dude. She said, was it this time? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. Engine on the left side of the plane malfunctioned. He said, that's okay. We'll just have to jump. He said, me, 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 you jump, jump, jump. No fucking way. She said, watch me, asshole. All you do is put on a parachute, jump out, go one, two, three, pull a rip cord, come down like a beautiful flower. He said, me, 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 jump, jump. No fucking way. She said, I said, asshole, watch me. She put on a parachute, jumped out. One, two. Three, pull the rip cord was coming down like a beautiful gardenia. About 10 seconds later, a flash come by her. <laughs> she heard, whoa, 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 one. <laughs> I never got over my fear of flying since I went over to Italy. I went over on Air Italia, you know, the one with the hair on the wings. Oh yeah, I went over there. Went over there and took my wife to see Statue of David. 16 feet tall with a little thing. My wife said, honey, that's you. I think what prompted that remark was something I said to her. We were at Grand Canyon together. <laughs> we coming back on there, I tell you. Italians are known for being nice, especially they know when you're in a disaster. We take off from the airport, we happy as hell, going home. Pilot comes on. This your captain is speaking. We have an engine, a one, two, a three, and a four. We're going to get there pretty soon. You'll relax, take it easy. We'll be there very soon. Thank you. About two hours go by. This is your captain is speaking. I'm excited to inform you. Engine number one is not functioning. But none you aware, we got a two, three, and a four. We're going to get there. It's just going to take a little longer. A few minutes later, this is your captain is speaking. Remember engine number one? Number two, make it the same fucking boo boo. Well, not you aware, we're gonna get there. It's just gonna take a little longer. Meanwhile, we put on some music that to make you feel comfortable. Tunes come on like, how deep is the ocean? <laughs> I got a date with a fucking angel. The movie was a Poseidon adventure. Second feature was Jaws. A few minutes later, this is your captain is speaking. Repeat after me, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, engine number three gone out, we're gonna make it, it's gonna take a little longer. The co-pilot, he got a parachute on, he's going for help. Cause he went in the toss. <laughs> but don't you worry, we're gonna get there, it's just gonna take a little longer. About that time, a little Italian guy sat next to me, punched me and said, yeah, if engine number four goes out, we're gonna be up here all fucking day. <laughs> we all learned about sexuality when we was little kids. Like little boy and little girl in the bathtub. Little girl said, what's that? Little boy said, I don't know. He said, well, How'd it get there? I don't know, it just grew there. You're lucky it didn't grow on your face. Can I touch it? Hell no, you done ripped yours off. <laughs> Play with my dick, you ain't got no more goddamn respect for it than that. <laughs> One of my favorite stories, guy jumps out of an airplane, Parachute, 
Pulls a chute, nothing happens. Pulls his parachute, nothing happens. By this time, the fucker's looking for lakes and shit. He gets about 100 yards from the ground. A black guy comes by him going up as quick as he's going down. He hauls at the black guy. Hey, man, you know anything about parachutes? Black guy said, no, motherfucker. You know anything about gas stoves? Making people laugh has been my whole life. Hope y'all had a good time. Appreciate it. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard the last comedy album Jay Hickman ever recorded. That weekend's performances are recorded forever on volumes 15, 16, and 17. Jay's health had been failing for several years with endless trips to the hospital and many weeks in intensive care. His doctors told him he only had a few weeks to live, and he knew they were right. So Jay scheduled a final comedy weekend bash, inviting all his friends from all over the country. But he felt his life slipping away, and he rescheduled his last show a week earlier. Taking heavy doses of painkillers so he could stand on stage and perform, he finished his last show, and then he died two days later, before his time still in his early 40s. Jay loved to make people laugh. His last request was that I continue to sell his tapes as long as people wanted them. The legacy he leaves to you, his fans, are on these tapes. Jay knew this was the only way to entertain you after he was gone, and he felt that in a way, your listening to his tapes would keep his spirit alive. I'm Arnie Hoffman, the owner and producer of Laughing Hyena, and I'm proud to say a friend of Jay's. Jay, your tapes will make you live on, as long as I have anything to say about it. Rest well, my friend. We'll all miss you.